Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 201 of the RRBG podcast. In this episode, I talked to Andrew Bowser. He is an actor and director, most known for his viral video for the weird Satanist guy and the weird gamer guy. The character in those videos is Onyx the Fortuitous. He's making a feature film called Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls. You can go to onyxthemovie.com for more details and you can chip in to back the project on Kickstarter, get yourself some cool rewards and help him make this movie, which sounds awesome. I talked to him a little bit about the creation of the film. Uh, I talked to him a bit about the creation of the character itself and how it connects to him personally. We talked a little bit about religion and horror movies. It was a fun conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to follow him on social media. Go to at Andrew Bowser Director on Instagram. And please check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG. Cheers. Your full name is Andrew Bowser, director, yes? Hey, you just call me Andrew Bowser. <laughs> for short. Yeah, for short. <laughs> All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with Andrew Bowser. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. I, uh, I'm having, this is a, a surreal moment for me because I, I was a big fan of your initial uh, like viral video, the Onyx, the, the weird Satanist guy. This was before it was yeah. Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, he had already named himself Onyx before oh. weird Satanist guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Uh huh. In the very first video was weird gamer guy. He mentions being Onyx the Fortuitous. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. Well, I mean, that was my the, my first exposure was obviously the the weird Satanist guy, and yeah, and for the longest, I was just I thought it was real, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But I also smoke a lot of weed, so I was just kind of like, oh, this got to be real. Right, right. Uh, um, <laughs> Everything feels slightly surreal yeah. in that state. <laughs> but it, it was just it was a fun. It was funny as hell. Um, you know, obviously, a part of me was like questioning it but for real i thought it was a thing and then eventually i realized like oh wait it's not it's not a real thing but you know right it's so well done the way you <laughs> produced it that it just Thank feels you. real i appreciate it yeah i mean for me it was always uh a lot of people over the years have said oh he's my favorite internet troll i love how you troll people but i the intention was never to troll anyone or or convince anyone that something was real that wasn't. It's just that the jokes were funnier to me presented in that real framework. Sure. I always figured somebody would watch it and go, well, I know this is a bit, but it's funnier to experience it as a newscast or as a video package. Um, I wasn't truly trying to dupe anyone, but they are fun when viewed that way. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, yeah. I, that's what did it for me. Like, I thought it was hilarious right off the bat. And then, you know, I'm like, man, is this real? And then I just started kind of looking into it. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, cool. Still, yeah. still great bit, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, it was around the time, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this time frame is a little wrong for me. But I feel like it was around the time that that guy was doing the the effort and the effort and the pee. Where like... Oh, what is that? You remember? Oh, 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 <clears throat> effort in the pee. Yeah. I thought you said... I thought you were saying a person's name, Efren the P. Efren the P. He's actually another gamer, weird Satanist yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it was around that time. I wonder when that. When was that video? I don't remember that. But I, I got real sad when I found out that wasn't real. I, d I didn't realize that wasn't real until very recently. Yeah. And it was on a comment on Reddit when somebody was saying, no, this weird Satanist guy is fake, just like Efren the P. And I was like, wait, mm. that's yeah. fake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got real sad when I saw that there was multiple, and I was like, "Oh wait!" And then I saw that it was a production. I'm like, "Aw, he was like a hero." Totally. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah, but hey, similarly with Onyx, I mean, if the, the connection I felt, you know, I I never was per se uh, like a an Onyx type, but I was. Right. But I'm a nerd. Like I like video games, and I like. You know, Magic the Gathering and metal and yeah. all that yeah. and horror movies and all that. So immediately I, I was like, oh, man, this is like an, it's like WWE. It's a, a turned up version of, of a yeah. person, you know, and yeah, and he and he's and he's uh, 
he's got so many niche interests. He can nerd out over anime, but he's also a horror nerd mm -hmm. and into metal. Yeah, it's, you know, in one video, he's a furry. So he has <laughs> a many, many niche interests as well that I think can help him connect to many different types of, of people. So how much of that is you? Well, a lot of it, but unfortunately, and this is terrifying to admit, but I don't know anything about anime. Mm. I don't know anything about video games. I mean, mm. across the board. Like, I don't... It, most of the time, if I'm referencing a video game in an Onyx sketch, I'm having to look it up and do the research the day I'm writing it, which I know makes me a fake nerd boy in some people's eyes, but his knowledge of any subject has to be so rich and deep. Even the stuff that I'm a fan of, I don't have as deep a knowledge as Onyx would have. <laughs> right. Um, the closest is is horror movies, and specifically 80s horror movies and 80s sitcoms. Whenever he references that, I'm usually pulling from my own knowledge base. Mm. But uh, when I, sh I shot at one at an anime convention, uh, right, just, yeah, I guess almost two years ago, and, and I had to sit and watch episodes of One Punch Man and like research characters in Cowboy Bebop to write the script. And uh, so it's a blend of my interests, but then Onyx definitely takes it to another level that requires me to do some research. It's almost more impressive, man, because you, you know, you're putting in the work, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, people write me and they're like, so what is, is Diablo your favorite video game? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I've never played Diablo, but Onyx, it's Onyx's favorite video game. Yeah. Or people will want to hire me to like DM, uh, you know, a Dungeons oh, and Dragons no. campaign. And I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't know the first thing about, do I have played Dungeons and Dragons, but I'm not um, a D and D connoisseur. So I just, I'd be out of my depths. I gotta tell you though. I gotta tell you though, that does sound like a thing, like a, yeah. like a, like you sign up on Patreon to play D and D with Onyx. Sounds like a thing. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I might actually add that as a reward to this current Kickstarter I'm doing because yeah. numerous people have brought it up. They've said, could I have you in as uh, the DM for my, my campaign or even just to play with us? Yeah. It would just take yeah. writing. Really. You would just have to yeah. sit and write stuff out. And then that way you could, you know, like recite it like acting, you know? Exactly. Yeah. 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 But it's great, man. I, I, you know, like I said, you're putting in the work, which almost seems more way more impressive to me just because, you know, as a fan, you're just doing this. This is your hobby. This is your, you know, totally. what you enjoy doing. But <clears throat> for someone like yourself that you don't, you don't really play or, or follow anime all that much, you have to sit there and like you're getting you're hitting these niche, deep cuts that yeah. you know, only the fans are going to are going to yeah. recognize. And that's good. That's a good that shows that you're doing your work. Well, especially when I've never wanted the intention behind the character to be that he's mocking anyone mm. or making fun of any type of fan. And uh, I've gotten criticism before, usually from people that I don't think quite understand my relationship to the character, but they'll say, oh, yeah, I love Weird Gamer Guy because I love that you're making fun of those types. Mm. And I get really defensive because Onyx is an extension of parts of my personality that I hold very near and dear. They're parts of my childhood or probably my middle my middle school self frozen in time. And so to think that I'm utilizing him to make fun of anyone, it just breaks down. That's not how I compute what I'm doing because uh, I hated being made fun of in middle school. So why would I then create a character that was mocking that type? Yeah. For me, it's like a celebration of those quirks and making Onyx someone that is comfortable in his own skin, ultimately, even though he's so anxious and twisted up. Mm. And so if I approach a subject like the furry thing, I asked people to be in his weird furry guy video and um, and a lot of furries said no because they yeah. were afraid we were going to make fun of them. And I said, let me just send you the script. Let me send you what Onyx's message is. And then you tell me if you want to be in it. And then actually almost all of them changed their minds because the script was actually about just being loved and loving people and being accepted somewhere, even if it is like a subculture that you find your place within. Yeah. And then you think like, yeah, but you're calling it weird Satanist guy. So are you saying Satanists are weird? Are you calling weird furry guy? Are you saying furry? And I'm saying, no, I'm saying that's how the world would define him. And uh, he doesn't see it that way. When, you know, when an internet video does go viral naturally, someone's usually uploaded it and they've said, look at this weird Satanist guy. Right. So that, that title is supposed to be objective and from like a third person's perspective. Yeah. I'm not saying Onyx is weird furry guy. I'm saying that's how the internet would digest him.
Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I love those subgenres and I love those subcultures of, of fandom. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, you know, it's something that I kind of fell into. I've always been since I was a kid, I was a nerd and, you know, but, but I also, I had like a, a weird balance. I was, I, I, I was forced to make a lot of decisions to, to be independent from my family and all this stuff that, that kind of made me a tougher, more like, you know, working, you know, working man instead of like nerdy. Yeah. But I also would nerd out over video games and Magic the Gathering and anime and all this stuff. And when I met my wife, she was actually the first person to take me to a, a convention. That was my mm -hmm. first ever con. And and I saw this world that I I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, yeah, this is what's going on. <laughs> like, yeah, I thought I was just me sitting at home watching a thing and like, you know, maybe I'll buy some merch. But like, yeah. Oh my goodness, it's a it's a whole world, and I got to you know we st I started going to every con I could not not to become like a, a con goer, but just and like observing and like okay yeah. wow this is nuts like and I, I appreciate it it's all love like totally I, you know what I mean well especially you know. I think one of my first comic cons was like Baltimore comic con. Cause I'm from Maryland originally. And I must've been like 11, 12 maybe. And a big thing back then, and this is going to sound insane to anyone listening. That's much younger than me, but you, there were certain answers you couldn't get unless you were at a convention and you could talk to other people that collected the same stuff and kind of spoke the same language. I'd had, I'd have questions about comic books that going to a con would get, them answer because I could talk to the people that are there selling those books or meet the artists. Yeah, it's not like now where everything's on the internet or it seems like all information's on the internet. Conventions were a place to like really converse with like-minded people and gain information and knowledge. Yeah, in and a really tactile way and socialize, which is something and socialize. That, uh, yeah, nerdy people uh, have a hard time with. Like I, I, yeah. I used to have a hard time with. You know, how do you approach someone? Like, hey, do you like pro wrestling? <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you can assure yourself that if you're at a convention, everyone there, that, yeah, everyone there has that common ground. Yeah, it's yeah. much easier to enter into like social interactions that way. Yeah. So, did you exp were you like that growing up with that social anxiety? Is that where that aspect of Onyx's personality comes from? Yeah, I, I, but it. What's weird is I don't think I. I think as a little little kid, I didn't have it as much. I think I remember, you know, third, fourth grade, still kind of being pretty free and loose, thinking I could be friends with anyone and everybody was nice. But it really was like going into middle school when social cliques started forming and weird, like little kid politics started forming. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like a guy I was friends with in the third grade, now in the fifth grade, just made the decision that I, 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 I was his enemy. Mm. And navigating that i mean i remember specific instances where i was like i don't know what to do in this situation and uh and then it just crept in and it really got a, a stronghold though in me to where yeah i mean middle school i always had performing to kind of unite me with people um i acted since i was really little so mm, okay. i'd feel safe in drama class and i'd feel safe doing plays and then that kind of provided that common ground. Somebody could be like, oh, you're in the school play. Oh, yeah, you're playing so-and-so. But then, but like just on my own in a class, God, yeah, I wouldn't know how to talk to anyone. Um, I mean, forget even, forget talking to girls. That's like, <laughs> that was way beyond what I, what I could even think of achieving. But um, yeah, so I think somewhere in there that just got frozen. And that's what Onyx is. He's this, this kind of perpetual state. I guess of arrested development, um, but it's 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 very easy for me to access. So it de it definitely is in there and not even very far beneath the surface. And when I kind of close my eyes and think about him, yeah, I'm I'm in middle school. So I think that's where <laughs> I think that's where it happened. I just remember kids being so all of a sudden so tough. I mean, yeah. I remember the, the threats in uh, an elementary school were, were what like I mean, I guess a, you know a kid threw a you know a, um, a dodgeball at me once when we weren't even playing dodgeball or i guess in like first grade a kid did strangle me on the playground <laughs> and, and my friend stopped him but then i got to middle school and it was like you know oh i want to fight you you want to fight me for what <laughs> just because meet meet me uh, meet me at the mcdonald's on route three we're gonna fight and like hit each other you know like all, 
<laughs> all of a sudden it was just like it's God, hormones God. man the hormones yeah you know you start true. the ladies are around now and you're like wait a minute that's sexy instead of like oh it's a yeah. girl ew it's like oh wait a minute why do i and, like her <laughs> yeah and then and then and guys start to feel like right. well i can't just be friends with this kid i've got to also beat him up to show that i'm an I'm alpha yeah, and yeah. i'm like what yeah. we can all just hang out and chill right yeah can't we just talk about uh, perfect strangers and Alf like we used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's such a weird thing, and and th that's something that schools don't even prep you for. Like you, oh yeah, you learn about it in school, but you don't. They don't teach you anything about that. Like, hey, by the yeah. way, around this, maybe in like two years, things totally. are going to get weird. <laughs> it's true. I never got the heads up that yeah, uh, yeah everything feels kind of freewheeling and, and open right now. But once you get into fifth, sixth grade. It's going to get tough. I never really got that heads up. Yeah. And I, which also kind of led me to keep it to myself. Like when I've told, told my parents now as an adult, some of the like bullying that I went through at school, because middle school was bad, but then you get into high school and oh, it was a whole other ball game. Yeah. Then there was like real physical threats and, and deeper like real, psychological threats. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, gosh, high school was like, yeah. And yeah, and I remember telling my parents about it as an adult. They were like, we had no idea you were experiencing that. Because I, I think as a kid, I just, I didn't even think about talking about it. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't a subject that was broached by anyone around me. Right. And then I even got paranoid about talking about it to my other friends. Because I was like, well, if they don't experience this, I don't want to look like a freak. Right. You know, why are people making fun of me? Why am I the target? Yeah. And we wound up in middle school forming like a little crew of of guys that were a comic club and we would draw comic strips and Ooh. our name was the born losers and uh <laughs> which is eerily similar to you know the losers club or whatever right, yeah. stephen king but uh we were the born losers and we gave ourselves like super power alter egos and that's how we got through a lot of middle school we'd, we'd each like take turns drawing a page and then trade it and then another guy drew the next page and that was part of what got us through that's really good. That's art therapy right there. It's you know? true. It really was. It really was. Yeah. Um, so w when you finally got Onyx kind of like, um, I guess, shaped as a character. Yeah. Uh, when was it that you decided you wanted to maybe do a movie about it or, or, or have him in a movie? Yeah. Well, what's so weird about him is that he I remember the first time I started performing some of the vocal tics that the character would have the first thing I thought of was him saying, I don't know, really quick. <laughs> and I just thought I it just came to me as a standalone phrase. I thought it'd be really funny if there was a character who was so insecure that he backpedaled after making any statement, even if it was a statement that he was certain of. Well, what's your favorite video game? Uh, Diablo three. I don't know. And you're like, well, <laughs> you do know it's Diablo three, but just always in his head, because yeah. I've always been accused of being in my head. I, I had a. a, a a girlfriend in high school who said you're always in your head and that was you know we're 17 and they're giving me that kind of diagnosis Jeez. but um yeah but uh but so it started off as these vocal tics and with weird gamer guy started exploring these jokes that would or could lead to backstory mm. and you know it sounds like a an aside and a joke it would never pay off for him to say he lives in his mom's basement or that he's got a stepdad that doesn't like him or a, a biological father that doesn't see him as his own they seem like jokes to just kind of laugh at the character but once i did that first sketch the weird gamer guy i walked away from it and i thought i kind of can see that guy sitting in a basement drinking tiny wines and i can imagine why he's doing that and and i'm a really big I like building narratives. I don't like anything being simply a joke um, yeah. uh, or simply a gimmick. And so right after doing Weird Gamer Guy, I, I felt like there was this, it sounds weird, but it's almost like David Cronenberg movie. It felt like there was this second person kind of growing inside me. And then I that video didn't go viral and I wanted it to. I floated it on the internet as if it was real, like I said. Mm. Um, so maybe initially I was kind of trying to trick some people, but, uh, <laughs> but it didn't go viral. It sat there. And then a year later, somebody put it on Reddit. It took place at E3 mm -hmm. a year later during the next E3, somebody put it on Reddit and it went viral. And a friend of mine said, are you doing that character still? And I was like, well, I had done some sketches in between where I was kind of Onyx, but I don't think I knew he was 
going to be a fully formed personality. I thought he was just like a nervous character I do. So I did another sketch that was like weird Comic-Con guy, but it's not even Onyx. There's no wig. There's uh, He's not even dressed the same way. And I consider that to be not canon. Mm, okay. Um, but I was doing some of the same vocal tics, but he was a little more aggressive in a way I didn't like. And But so when Weird Gamer Guy went viral, my friend said, you should really do a video like that again. And I found the Satanist um, news video uh, and decided to shoot out on the street in Burbank and then splice it together. And then once I did that, I immediately was like, oh, wow, this guy's been kind of brewing in me for a while. And now I see even more of him. Mm -hmm. And with each news video I did, I'd kind of learn more about him. And then I immediately started thinking, well, he could be a Pee Wee or an Ernest, uh, you know, or Wayne's World. He could be a good sketch character that might have some some legs. But everybody else around me didn't agree. They were like, well, no, he's catchphrases. He's a meme. He's a meme. Mm. And the idea that someone like me from the eighties would, would just create a meme. I, I'm never going to be happy with that. I don't yeah. know what that even, I know what it is, but I don't know as a writer what achievement that is. So I was always hoping to turn him into a three dimensional character, but it took making this web series called welcome to the shadow zone with my, uh, where I used to work a place called nerdist. Mm -hmm. That was the real test of I'd only done news videos and sketches with him. Can I place him in a narrative environment? And when I started writing that, to be honest, it was tough because the energy he may have being caught on the news, mm -hmm. that's a different energy than yeah. him sitting alone in his basement. Maybe he's more comfortable. Maybe he's more relaxed. Maybe he doesn't even say, I don't know, a lot mm -hmm. when he's by himself. And it took me writing him in different environments to really, really believe that he could be a character in a feature narrative. But after we did Shadow Zone, I was really sold on that idea of taking him to another level in, in a narrative context. And uh, and I had many ideas over the years, but it just wasn't until recently where I really feel like I figured out the specific plot that would help the character make sense to a new audience and to people that have liked the internet videos for years. Nice, man. I honestly, when I saw the announcement of the movie, the first thing I was like, of course, that makes sense. This should have, <laughs> well, that's should good. have happened that's good. a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that was your reaction. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I got super excited because, you know, like I said, I, I that video was hilarious to me. I connected immediately. And, yeah. you know, I even blame you from some for some uh, psychological trauma that I have now where. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like every once in a while, I'll say, I don't know like real, real quick <laughs> yeah and i'm like damn it i'm doing it because of that <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i will say it not as onyx but mm. since uh, since i am onyx people will laugh when i say it if i'll be in a meeting for work and i'll say i don't know and they're like <laughs> kind of giggling under their breath and i realize that they're they must know his videos so have um, you felt have you felt that maybe a little bit of you is turning into onyx well Do without you, a doubt when yeah. i it, when my anxiety spikes i just become him <laughs> I, I i may not get the same vocal tics but everything that hinders him is somewhere inside of me you know he really feels like the whole world's against him he really feels like everyone's waiting to judge him everyone's waiting to heap shame on him and when i get upset or again my anxiety spikes you know even navigating this kickstarter just every day is are we going to get the money are we not do people like the character enough to support it do they not i find myself having waves of like you know no one believes in me everybody thinks i'm worth nothing you know you just get <laughs> to these yeah. manic places and and then i realize oh that's that's onyx that's that's why that's in there it's like kind of getting close to a it's like a live wire is exposed and at any point i can reach out and touch it i just probably shouldn't <laughs> Yeah. Um, but he is that like is the exercising of that energy. I mean, I'll 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 be angry about something and it sounds lame, but I mean you mentioned art therapy. I'll I'll sit down and make a TikTok where Onyx is angry about something else, but it's really to get my emotion expressed or at least kind of exercise from my system. No, that's good. And it, it makes yeah. that the realness of it makes it like a more a uh, passionate video, something that people right. will connect to more because they're like, oh, he's feeling that, you know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one thing I realized early on was um, I've never had a hard time. I, I used to be in a band and and uh, a criticism uh, of the music from another band who I really liked 
was like, it's all very urgent. Mm. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, I don't know. Everything's very, it's not relaxing. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's, very well, tense. Our, our, it's very tense. And now I realize that that urgency or passion, I do think in the music maybe sounded a little too intense, but as Onyx, it just means there is this emotion. I mean, I can't put him in any scenario without him having an extreme emotional reaction, which yeah, it helps ground the character. It helps him maybe even be a little bit, I wouldn't say more than Ernest or more than Pee Wee, but in a way, I mean, I love those characters and I love Napoleon Dynamite, but I also wanted to create a character and especially with this film where you can see Onyx cry or break down because of a loss in his life or be panicked out of fear and it actually feel real and not played strictly for comedy. That's mm. always been the goal is to kind of ground everything with an emotional base. Okay. So is the movie going to, I mean, is it, obviously it's a comedy, but I mean, yeah. there's horror elements. Are there yeah. going to be like real drama elements as well? There are, I'd say they're, they're kind of localized to Onyx's uh, past. Mm. Basically, um, ever since the very first video, I've made jokes about his relationship with his dad or his stepdad and his mom. And I'd say if there is a dramatic anchor to the movie, it's the scene that happens in, in the center of the movie where um, through something kind of supernatural that happens at this mansion he's at, he actually gets a glimpse into something from his past that, you know, to be frank, is is a look at some trauma in his life. And it's nothing too heavy. I don't think it's something that would would sink the, the vibe of the film, but it's definitely heavy. And I had a few friends read the script so far, and it's funny, the reaction, almost everyone says that scene is key. You've got to keep that scene. It's like surprising how emotional it is. But then one friend was like, I don't know, man, that might be too dark for this comedy. <laughs> and I'm like, but also in the same comedy, people are getting murdered because it's a horror comedy. So it's not out of the question to just have a little bit of kind of family trauma explored. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's in there. And I think it's in there in a way that it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't weigh down the energy, but it just, I have to try to anchor things to an emotional reality. And I think it does that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I, I like yeah. that because it, it it also makes you connect a little deep on a deeper level to the character. Like for sure, push it past that boundary that you were talking about of it being a meme into like an actual yeah. you know full fledged character that can now yeah. this could be the beginning. You know, if this does really well, you can make another movie or he can start appearing yeah. in other movies as a you know like a guest. Uh, totally. So I, it's I think it's great. I think it's great, and you know obviously. A, uh, fully it feels fully fleshed out like i'm looking at your uh your kickstarter and the, the merchandise yeah. is all fantastic yeah well i appreciate it i mean i after the all these years of doing the character i didn't want to go into the kickstarter with anything half baked so for months i've been sourcing art for those rewards and commissioning the art for those rewards and and just talking to fans about what they'd want to see i started a private facebook group just to do kind of like market research and ask people, what what do you want to see in these rewards? And I even showed them the rewards, got their feedback, and then changed the rewards before launching. Um, because it was very, one thing that I, I don't have as, as readily available as the fans do is any real objectivity around how Onyx may have been perceived mm. or loved by people over the years. Right. Because for me, the focus right now is the movie and the thing I wrote that I, I'm excited to shoot. And when I went to make these reward tiers, all the merch was about the movie, the Talisman of Souls t-shirt, or get a glimpse at Onyx dressed like this satanic cult member in this toy. But people were like, oh, I, I want a t-shirt that says, notice me, senpai. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, right, from the video from before. You know, it's, <laughs> it's almost like, yeah. it's just, it's not in my, it's not front of mind for me because right. I'm always focused on the next thing. So that was a, a wake up call. I went back through and changed the tears to involve quotes from the older videos references to the older videos, uh, even like all of the older videos with new commentary from me talking about where we shot it, how we did it, and um, who was involved. Because sometimes I'll hire actors off of like LA casting mm. and they'll show up in a field to be in a weird, they're like, what is this? And I'm like, well, it's like a news report, but it's fake. You'll see. And then that video, <laughs> that video will get like 9 million views and they'll message me and be like, well, I had no idea what I was signing up for. 
So I'll do commentaries for all those videos. But yeah, it was just important to me that when people looked at that Kickstarter page, they recognized the effort that I'm willing to put in to make it worth everyone's time and money. And that it was truly like a payoff for kind of years of supporting these these videos and this character. It definitely comes through, man. It definitely comes through. Um, uh, You know, the hard work is there. Also, uh, you know, you have a a charisma about you. Like when you speak it, like you were saying, that sense of urgency that the people were talking about in the band. Yeah. It's 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 good, though. Like it's one of it's one of those few things like I've 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 had the, the fortune of meeting a lot of uh artists and and performers that you know you you see something else there like i i think i might have said this before but like i met uh i don't know if you know anything about uh wwe superstars in any way a little bit only because a co-worker recently is a big wde fan so i've I've learned a little but it's not inherent to me but i do know some well xavier woods is is, uh from the the new day he's also a huge gamer and now he's hosting in g4 like he's doing yeah he's doing things but that was i met him at e3 because i i work for a company and he passed by and I don't want to say names. That's why I say a company. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, he passed by and we and he participated. He did a video for his uh, blog uh, at my booth, and yeah. it was so crazy to see them meet him in person because you see them on TV and you see this like personality, but you always have like in your head you're like, all right, that's a character, right? Uh, but when he started talking to me, I'm like, oh no no, that dude's on a whole other level, and I feel that <laughs> about you as well. Like there's this energy of creativity. The way you speak is very eloquent. So like those moments that Onyx has where he goes on a rant <laughs> of like opening up the gates of Bob, you know, like he goes yeah. like, but so detailed and so well spoken. Like I knew that that was also your normal personality like that. Right, right. That's not just something like people can't just fake that. <laughs> That's yeah. very how I appreciate that. Yeah. And and I think that's an accurate insight because I, I, when I sit down to write Onyx, I tell you, it comes so easily. <laughs> it's not, it's not to say that it isn't work, Yeah. but I knew in writing this feature script that if I got the idea right, just the basic premise and got enough of the pieces of the puzzle in my head, when I actually sat down to write all of the scenes and dialogue, that it would be there. And it really was, it just, flowed i mean i i haven't had an easy time writing something as i as i have writing that um and it is because it's it's how i think you know when i think of the way there's a there's a scene in the movie where um onyx is scared because he goes off to this mansion and some really creepy stuff starts happening and uh when he's starting to have a little bit of a panic attack he reminds himself of something that one of his friend's moms told him when he used to get scared at sleepovers which is that We're all underneath the same sky. We're all underneath the same moon. So if you're scared where you are right now, just look up and know that somebody you love is looking at that same moon. And that's a reference to American Tale, that animated film. Mm. And so my my friend's mom used to sing, uh, somewhere out there beneath the stars tonight, or from American Tale, to calm me down when I was having panic attacks. (laughs) Fievel. So that's in the movie. So Uh. it's like all I have to do is, whether or not we can keep that song in the movie, we'll see. But... (laughs) But uh, yeah, but but the energy of, okay, Onyx is scared. Onyx doesn't know what to do. He wishes he weren't in this creepy mansion. He wishes he was home. That memory comes to mind. And then I just write that memory. And if he weren't such a deep part of me, that wouldn't be so easy. I'd have to be manufacturing this stuff, fabricating it. But instead, all I have to do is relax and think about those memories from my childhood. And then that's right there on the page. Now, were, were you always like this, like when you were very, very young, or did this kind of grow out of going to acting and drama classes and all of that? You know, I, I do think it started very young, um, but my relationship toward creating ha- has definitely grown and maybe mutated is the better word. <laughs> um, but I always used art to express myself or to escape. Um, I just didn't realize to what degree, but now I've, you know, I've gotten to the place where creating is just like breathing to me. I I get, I I feel frustrated and pent up if I haven't made something and it's not even ultimately like any artist, I want to make something and get recognition for it, of course. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned as I've grown up is I do have a relationship to creating that can be satisfying for just me. 
And I don't think I had, I don't think I had awareness around that even just in my early twenties, I was dissatisfied if I made something and it didn't get recognized, but I'm trying to grow around that. And, and lately I've realized, you know, some of this is just for me. I'll write a whole feature screenplay mm. and be like, well, that one was just for me. That was just for me to learn some <laughs> things about myself. Um, and then there are, yeah, it's practice and mm. it's even providing some like emotional insight or uncovering some things. I'll look at a scene and wonder why did I write that? And then I'll talk to my therapist about that <laughs> s- scene and they'll tell me, well, I don't think that has to do with this and that. But as a kid, I didn't realize, um, I guess, how deep the relationship was to creating. I knew I liked to draw a lot and sometimes I draw angry things or scary things or messy things. But I think I was taught that I grew up in a church and, and I, I, it wasn't really um, like, uh, what's the word? It wasn't super sheltered and super uh, strict. Like evangelical and strict. Yeah, but there was just enough of that oversight to kind of impede on my creative process. Mm. I definitely would get criticism every once in a while from youth pastors or leaders that would say, well, why are you writing stuff like that? Or why are you drawing stuff like that? It was just enough to get a little bit of shame on me for for creating the way I did. So I think for a long time as a kid, I thought what I was creating that maybe it was shameful. Like I just, I draw a weird picture of a decapitated clown and, you know, screaming and bleeding and think like, oh fuck, what's wrong with me? Mm. Yeah. And now I just have a much healthier relationship to it. So it thrives more now because it's, I understand it's there to help me. Whereas as a kid, also as a kid, I applied a lot of value to it. Like, these people will like me if I get this part in the play or I'll have better standing socially. If I can be the kid that booked a part in a TV show that makes me cool. And as you get older, a lot of that stuff wears off because if you're going to just be an artist for a lifetime, you have to learn to re- relate to your art in a, in a healthy way. Yeah. And even with Onyx, you know, if I make a video that doesn't get a lot of views, I'm, I'm tempted to be like, man, Onyx, you messed up. Why didn't you, why weren't you funnier? Why didn't more people like that video? And I've gotten to the place where I I don't shame him the way people used to shame me. I'm like, you know what, man, we're doing this together. I thought it was funny, (laughs) you know? I liked the video. And and definitely in writing the script, I had to have that energy. I couldn't think about the end goal. I just needed to make myself laugh and feel like I was utilizing Onyx and the art for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it more authentic because that that definitely yeah. is a chase that a lot of creatives have. Where, and 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 it's a it's a root of a lot of mental health issues for a lot of people. That you know, I, it, yeah, it's a deeper TED Talk type conversation sure, about the sure. effects of social media and everything. Oh but, my gosh, I know. But uh, but you know what what you were you were saying that that kind of it's it's what makes an artist good too is that kind of like self examining. Uh, self-criticizing yeah. but there has to be a, a line where you don't you don't put yourself down too much because that's yeah. where that's what that's where the depression comes in where you're just like well i'm just gonna give up i don't want to do it anymore totally yeah, yeah i know i've been lucky that my you know knock on wood i've been lucky that my fuel source is is very easily replenished i'm not an artist that goes into long stretches of of a drought Mm-hmm. or 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 a depression and i know i'm very lucky to not not experience severe depression um uh, but it seems like just going back to the well is is easy for me and i don't know if that's because i've i've kind of self entertained for so long mm. but um i can get angry and frustrated at something and you know maybe it's a day before i feel like well that's all right i got the next thing and it's this you know <laughs> like i get i come back around pretty quickly um, which wasn't always the case. There used to be longer downtimes, mm-hmm. but now I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a rhythm where I, I truly enjoy creating and, uh, and I'm happy when I go back to the well to find out what I want to do next. Yeah. You got to ride that wave when it's there. Yeah. You know, there was, yeah. there was a period in my life for about 10 years where it was all music and, mm-hmm. you know, doing the band thing and touring and recording. And it was always like, okay, so what's next? We're going to, we're done with the tour. Yeah. Another album. Let's do more music. Let, you know, and it was like a, a you ride that wave until it's yeah. done, you know, pretty much. And, and it's, it's a real, uh, uh it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it shows the type of person that you are that once you finish that ride on that wave, you now get on another ride. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because some people, you know, the one hit, one hit wonders. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think that's you. You have a ton of work that you've done in the past. You know, this isn't your one hit, you know, thing that if it doesn't work, I feel that if it, it's going to work, it's already, to me, it's already, <laughs> it's like, it makes sense. This is a thing that exists already, even yeah. though it hasn't been, you know, you're not done with it. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. It feels like it's, there's no, there's no stopping this ride <laughs> <laughs> i hope not yeah i hope not but i feel also like afterwards you can you're gonna have more there's more yeah you know. uh, now i wanted to go back real quick and maybe go a little too deep but That's uh, fine. one thing that i've noticed a lot and it's my from my own personal experience um fans of horror movies and fans of like metal for example or you yeah. know dark stuff satanism and whatnot um it, it they're almost all ex you know catholic school private school <laughs> yeah. you know yeah and it makes me wonder like are you do you realize like you're the, the school is responsible for this like you you made yeah. me uh understand what horror is you fed me yeah. this fear for years like be you know like there's a the a god-fearing man that's that phrase right you're a god totally. man. so you're, you learn you learn about fear in these schools it's not without a doubt yeah i yeah and I think on a like real foundational level, right, I was taught to be afraid of the wrong things when really what I felt was most damaging more than anything, more than any horror comic book I could read or scary movie I could watch. The thing that was most damaging to my psyche growing up was the idea that there was an omnipotent being who was unhappy with me. <laughs> right. Like yeah. that, is, I mean, and that's, Onyx rarely talks about God. But he mostly talks about the devil or right. uh, or any kind of talks about it in a mythical way and, and less of a religious way. But but if there was a like a, a key to unlocking Onyx, it is this idea that he he's somehow shameful and he's letting some great being down. And in his world, it can be his father or, you know, any other number of authority figures in his life. But I know for me, it comes from this idea that. I've messed up somehow already before, which is also Christianity. You know, yeah. your your original sin, your flawed, like will only ever be so good. Um, and I, I just related to that uh, too well growing up. My personality type was like, that's right. Totally. I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, totally. Got it. <laughs> and yeah. it, that to me is scarier than any of this stuff. I mean, I get messages from friends of mine that are still, uh, Christians or go to church and, and they're like, a lot of my friends are like, so are, are you a Satan? I mean, you, you can't be. And I'm like, I don't even want to entertain. I don't even want to discuss that because right. what I am or what I'm not just l look at my art. What do you think I am? Ultimately that's all that's going to matter is how you perceive me. Right. I could sit here and tell you I'm still a huge Christian and I still believe everything you believe. And it won't matter because then I'll go off and make a weird movie and you'll think I'm not a Christian. Right. You know, most of that thinking is around them wanting some amount of safety in their world. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to provide any kind of answer or safety for their world, for their paradigm. I mean, I had a friend recently that was like, I showed one of your videos to uh, my 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 girlfriend and she was like, well, he's not a Christian. He can't be and, and make that. And I'm like, well, if she thinks that, then she's right. I mean, I can't change her truth yeah. and I don't want anyone to try to affect mine. And yeah, when early on in my horror uh, adventures, my mom was like, why do you like all that ugly stuff that weird? And I'm like, what? It's because of how you guys <laughs> raised me. Because you weren't you counting me. on the chemicals in my brain to acknowledge the <laughs> adrenaline of fear into yeah, excitement. <laughs> totally. I mean, I, I, I can't even review when I hear when I hear uh, people say, well, I didn't like that movie as a horror fan because it, it didn't scare me. Yeah. I, I'm like, I don't remember the last time I was scared at a movie. I don't judge horror movies based on how they scare me. I like the way that they make me feel good. Yeah. I have on my TV VCR back here. I leave a horror movie on all day nice. and it's comforting. I listen to John Carpenter to relax you know it's weird it doesn't have the same effect as um as it has on on other people and yeah i again the, the, you're right the scariest thing is the way i felt uh in, in a church you know the fear that i had that i was going to let someone down or that you know hellfire and brimstone and i remember the scariest thing i ever read in the bible was this idea that any sin can be forgiven and i don't remember of course i'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. but any sin can be forgiven uh, except for like blaspheming the holy spirit 
And I used to struggle really seriously with obsessive compulsive problems. Mm. And you get a thought like that in somebody who suffers from OCD's head. And they're like, oh, my God, did I just blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Well, what does that mean? Does it mean like just saying fuck God? Well, I just said it. But I said it as an example. I didn't say it <laughs> meaning fuck God. Well, fuck, wait, did I just say it again? Wait, have I double blasphemed? You know, and then you're just spinning off into. Yeah. Uh, nothing's more terrifying than that. <laughs> so yeah. Freddy Krueger's not as scary as that. No, not at all, man. It's it's yeah. nuts, it's nuts to me because, uh, and I'm not putting down the religion at all. You you do you, but uh, whoever needs to do it. Uh, but yeah. but I, I I you know I grew up in in that system as well. Up until about seventh grade, I was going to private school, and it was it was the source of all my anxiety and trauma. And, yeah, you know. But uh, my brain started registering this fear, or the shame as a good thing like right and, you know i i started acting out uh, i guess acting out uh by doing those things more you like yeah i was being pushed in that direction like don't you shouldn't listen to that don't listen to that marilyn manson i'm like well i'm going to the record store right now and i'm right. buying that record because totally fuck you guys. totally yeah. uh but yeah. but it's it's definitely i've i've you know i grew up loving horror movies as well it, and it was traumatizing i remember being i still have a vivid memory of hiding behind my parents couch to the sh 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 that, yeah that, yeah that sound messed me up completely totally know? but um but you know one thing i like to tell uh christian folks that they don't like they don't like hearing it but uh when i when they call me a satanist because i listen to metal or because i watch yeah. horror movies like oh you're, you're you're a satanist i'm like well you know that that's just part of the same story right yeah satan is in your bible like there's, yeah yeah he's a character in that story like so yeah. if i'm a satanist i'm also a christian and if you're a christian you're also believe in satan he exists right in your world I, <laughs> there's even stuff like that investigated in this onyx script which i didn't expect but when um like brief plot summary just so people have context is that onyx looks up to this this satanic leader named bartok and there's like a Willy Wonka situation where Bartok is going to invite five guests to his mansion for a once in a lifetime ritual. Mm. So he's basically looking for five followers to enter this big contest and be chosen to go to his mansion for a weekend and experience this crazy ritual led by him. And of course, Onyx enters and he gets accepted into this contest. And uh, once there, I immediately started writing because sometimes your brain goes to the tropey, predictable thing. Because you watch so many movies, you're like, yeah, when he gets there, you know, one of the Satanists is like this. Like, maybe there's a jock. Like maybe there's a hot girl. You, you start doing the stereotypical thing. And I got, like, one page past those character descriptions. And I was like, oh, I can't write this movie. I need them all to be three-dimensional. You know, you can make some of them two-dimensional because maybe they're going to die. But then you're not going to care about them dying. So I went back and I and I was like, OK, I love Onyx and I know Onyx. Who else can I place around him that I would love and want to know so that every person in this movie is three dimensional? And I rewrote all the character types. And in doing that, though, I needed to provide backstory as to why they're each Satanists. Mm. And Onyx tells his reason. And and it's it, and it has to do with his dad leaving that when his dad left when he was a kid, in order to cheer him up, his mom took him to a flea market and said, you know, here's five bucks. You can buy anything you want. And he bought this record that Bartok had released that was kind of like, you know, Satanists for dummies or whatever. Okay. And uh, and that's how he started down this path. But everybody else has their own story. And um, it made me have to investigate God and the devil and how people relate to those entities and how they kind of rewrite a lot of what those entities are and for their own purposes and and I wrote a character who's a woman that was a Christian her whole life, was the wife of a pastor and uh, who was taught that, you know, serving the Lord would kind of keep her and her family safe. And that if there was a problem, it was because of sin. You know, that's another thing you're taught in certain churches is like even sickness. They'll say, well, usually sickness is because you let a sin into your life. You partnered with the devil on some level because sickness comes from the devil. It doesn't come from God. Right. So if you're sick. You know, what did you do to sin against God and make yourself sick? And that's a mind fuck. <laughs> but so I have this female uh, character basically say, I lived my life as a good Christian woman. And then one day my husband died in a car accident and it wasn't his fault. It was someone else's fault. And 
on that day, I just turned in the other direction and started talking to the devil instead of God. <laughs> Nice. And, and Onyx is like, oh, that's tight. <laughs> like, he's like, ex not excited that her husband passed, but he, he says something like, oh, I get it. So um, your husband died and you started worshiping the devil? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and it just kind of tracks with him. Yeah. And I wanted to give everybody some kind of meaningful backstory. But it, I, it's funny that it led me to writing scenes that are actual conversations I've had in my head about God and the devil and the way that I relate to those entities being brought up the way I was brought up. For sure, man. man. I'm excited to see this movie. Uh, I mean, everything I hear so far is exciting. I'm a fan of old school horror movies as well. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's and it's it's kind of got its place in pop culture these days. You know, it, yeah. it's not as like you were saying earlier, like shameful. Like it, totally you know, horror movie. Like there's bo you can get a box that comes to your house from a serial killer where you can yeah. solve solve this murder you know it's like exactly okay, it's, a, it, it's a little more accepted and people are, are into it and everybody's into the nostalgia as well so i mean i'm, yeah. I'm assuming we're going to get some hints of nostalgia in the film as well yeah the whole vibe is the the funny thing is when i watch stuff that's considered throwback nowadays to especially to 80s horror films um they might throw back to the style or some of the the tone but they, they forget that not all these movies were just campy and trash. Like, a lot, I mean, I, I have Pumpkinhead on my TV almost every day. And that movie, yeah, there's some dumb teenage characters that are underwritten. But there's also a great, deep performance given by Lance Henriksen. So when I think of paying homage to those movies, I think a lot of times people think, oh, so it'll be campy and like a little vapid. But that's not true. I, I like, I want to pay homage to the well-written 80s horror movies, the ones that actually had some depth. So the characters feel real and tangible. And and yes, maybe a, a lot of the reference points are, like I said, a little superficial. I mean, there's not much depth to some of the characters in Fright Night. But arguably, I think the friendship that's formed between Charlie and Peter Vincent has some real meat to it. Um, so my homage is both in style, but it's also trying to maybe elevate it a little and bring more meat to the characters and meat to the narrative. Um, but there is there's like key scenes that are direct homages to a movie like Poltergeist. Um, there's there's definitely Fright Night references throughout. And even just in the characterization of some of the, the characters in the film, there's a character named Mr. Duke that's that's pretty much modeled after uh, Peter Vincent from Fright Night. Nice. Um, yeah. So there's homages both in the literal sense of their scenes that reference old 80s movies. And then there's just kind of an overall like vibe that's imbued in the whole thing that's awesome that's and awesome. practical monsters there's there's depending on budget there's there's two that we clearly have to see there's a third that if we get enough money will will show um but i want them to be done as practically as possible i'm sure there'll be some cgi to heighten things or sure. you know, make make eyeballs blink or pupils move but most of the uh, effects are going to be practical too. And this is something, I mean, uh, are you working with a company? Is this all you? No, that, that's the other thing. A lot of people don't know. And that's what I'm trying to put forth in the Kickstarter is that a, a, as a director, I've been creating for a long time as well, not just as a performer. And so when I was at Nerdist, we made so many sketches and so many shorts and parodies that needed creature design and uh, makeup and prosthetics. And so I've linked up with a really great team at Studio ADI um, who, I mean, Tom Woodruff was the man in the pumpkin head suit and he co-owned Studio ADI. Nice. And then uh, his son, David, is somebody I've worked with a number of times. And so they'll be involved in this film. So uh, we've got like a legit creature house involved. Sweet. That's going to help us pull all of that off. And then I have numerous makeup artist friends and, and yeah, and a special effects place that's like ready to work if we get the money yeah that's exciting man that's exciting yeah 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 because uh, you know you don't have the uh the hollywood budget you know this is right. an independent project you know you can't just yeah um and that does it, it i think honestly practical effects like you said are much better for for the, the heart even new movies they need to slow down with the cg yeah it's not well, the weird good. thing <laughs> totally and the weird thing is if you a lot of times when practical effects are used in, in movies these days that are throwbacky, they're almost used in an ironic way to highlight how artificial it looks, mm. especially if it's like a horror comedy. It's sure. like, oh, LOL, that head blowing up looked bad, but it looked bad on purpose. 
But my intentions are to, to shoot the practical effects in a highly convincing way. I mean, people, I think because digital has just taken over, you don't even get the same scene coverage you would get to sell that special effect. Like, you know, rewatching like Terminator 2, there was this era where the the hybrid of practical and CG was still at a great kind of meeting point yeah. where you still had to shoot your practical effects in a convincing way. Well, we're only going to show this in an insert shot. Well, we're going to go wide when we show that one bit and then we're going to get back tight. And then there were CG elements that bridged all of that to make one convincing sequence. Whereas now, I mean, every Marvel movie just has one giant camera move that just moves through a CG landscape and rubber people pulls out to a big maximum, you know, environmental overhead and then zooms all the way back. So it all just feels like rubber and mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no bridging elements that actually sell it being believable, sell it being real. It's so funny I think that it's it looks more rubber than actual rubber from the practical I, effects. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, your eyeballs see it as like synthetic. They don't. You don't. You don't receive it as real. Yeah. Um, whereas at least the yeah the rubber and foam kind of at least I think I, I can imagine touching it and I can imagine it. I mean the the effects in the thing mm -hmm. make me cringe still when I think about ugh, bodies splitting apart like that. Yeah. More than movies that have done similar effects digitally, I just don't feel it. Yeah. Yeah, it's empty. It, it feels empty to me. Like, I, I love the Marvel movies just because I'm, yeah. I'm a huge nerd that likes comic books. So For sure. even if there are CGE, you know, a little rubbery, uh, I still enjoy it. But yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think the best thing they did was that like mixture of, of practical and CG with Thanos, for example, with Josh Brolin. Right. Like they did a good job with that. Um, but I've always yeah. I've always like that was my big problem with The Matrix 2. Like the first yeah. one had this revolutionary camera work that everybody was blown away by. And then two comes along and they have this giant fight scene with like 30 or 40 dudes that all look like yeah. gummy bears. I know. <laughs> I remember in the theater thinking like, what the hell? What am I even supposed to watch? What am I tracking? <laughs> Who do I look at? Yeah, it's just this yeah. you know, a melee. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of little things that people don't, uh, you know, I try to get. I'm not a director, uh, but I've been watching films since I was little. Uh, I don't consider myself some kind of like professional or anything, but I've just been a fan forever. And yeah. I'll, I'll get into these conversations with people like, hey, why, why, do you, why do you think Mad Max was so good? Fury Road, you know, yeah. it's because of the directing, like the, totally. the, the, the directing of the camera and everything. And they're just like, no, it's the, 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 the special effects. It's the acting. It's like, mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, <laughs> that's a perfect example of a movie blending practical with 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 visual effects. I mean, yeah. There's so much that's real in that movie, and then all of the CG is used to heighten everything and make you know environments feel bigger and make the backgrounds feel more expansive. But like, yeah, you can feel people physically landing on on vehicles and hitting platforms hard. I mean, it it all feels so much more lived in. Yeah, for sure. Well, man, uh, I'm I'm excited. Like I said, if you need a, a big tattooed monster that does death metal vocal growls, Perfect. let yeah. me know. I, yeah, I, I, got, I, I know a guy. And then uh, but anybody that's watching or listening to this right now, um, I'm almost guarantee anybody that listens to this show knows the weird Satanist guy video. Like it's <laughs> it was super viral and it's it was specifically viral amongst the people like myself and my, you yeah. know, the people that listen to the show and, and musicians and comic people. And it, it, you, you've definitely seen this video at least once in your life. <laughs> so help Andrew make this movie be yeah. a part of it. Like the Kickstarter, I'm looking through it here and, and depending on the tier, the rewards, like you can get your name in the credits all the way to like actually being in the movie. Yeah, totally. Yep. And, and there's, and there's also stuff that will just get you a link to watch the movie when it's done. Mm -hmm. There's tiers that get you a Blu-ray copy. Then there's cool swag as t-shirts and stickers. And uh, yeah. there's a comic book a cartoon you know, speaking of 80s throwbacks, there's a Mad Ball. You can get an Onyx Dude, Mad Ball. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. What's up with the Mad Ball? That's the, the Mad Ball. Is it like it's licensed? Like, like, where'd you get that? <laughs> no, that's why I'm calling it a Freak Ball. I'm calling oh, it a Freak yeah. Ball. <laughs> it's our version of a Mad Ball. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. And then at a, at, a, at a pretty high tier, you can get a vinyl toy. But there's plenty of lower options, too. There's a and I, want... I see a Fez hat, Fez cap. Yeah, you... A fez, because in the movie, uh, when they join this 
disciples of Abaddon cult. They they get these Fez hats. Ah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I yeah. see the VHS is a slime green VHS. Nice slime throwback. Slime green. Yep. Yep. Slime green VHS. Yeah, so. I had a green copy of uh, Ninja Turtles uh, VHS, and that's what I wanted to give people. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, what's the what's the easiest way? Is it Kickstarter.com? Is there like a, a website or yeah. should they just go to onyxthemovie.com? Or? Onyxthemovie.com. That'll okay. take you to the Kickstarter. That's okay. the that's the link I've been pushing. And it's O-N-Y-X, the movie.com. Onyxthemovie.com. And we've got about, at least at the time of this recording, we have about 36 or 35 days left. And the thing I'm really trying to wage war against is the mid-campaign slump. Everybody mm. tells me, there's a slump in the middle of the campaign, so get ready. So we're about a week uh, away from what could be our slump, so I'm trying to fight through it and get as many backers as I can over the course of the next week. Well, everybody listening, chip in. Just, you know, yes, please. five bucks. It, it, it may seem like nothing to you, but it means the world. It gets things moving. Yeah, it really does. past that slump that you mentioned, because I have I have noticed that, that, like, you know, there's that middle slump, yeah. because everybody gets excited at first, and totally. then there's kind of like... Now what? <laughs> Keep totally. it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. But yeah, go to onyxthemovie.com. Um, follow you on the social medias at the Andrew Bowser director. Yeah. Uh, that is that across the board or is that just Instagram? Uh, that's just Instagram, Andrew Bowser on Twitter. And then my YouTube channel is Bowser Vids Totally. Bowser Vids Totally. <laughs> dot com. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, but yeah, check it all out support andrew thank you so much for your time man i appreciate it uh i'm, I'm gonna be good. i'm gonna be getting one of those shirts i like the one with the pentagram and his face oh yeah yeah the baseball <laughs> tee the raglan i want yeah that. so that's I'll great be picking that up but awesome thank you thanks again guys and uh, please tune in help him out let's make this movie yeah thank you thank you for having me for sure brother take care all right bye, all right. bye.